In last Sunday's sermon, we were looking at how Paul was telling the Thessalonians at his end, at the end of his first letter to them, telling them how he was praying, that he was praying that they would be sanctified, that they would grow in their relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Now, then he says, as further explanation and emphasis, this is the second half of 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, the second half of verse 23. He says, may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whole spirit, soul, and body. Now, in this verse, we stumble upon a bit of an historic philosophical controversy, a controversy that in the sermon last week, I had to leave on the desk. The, the question is, is this, is a person composed of three parts or two parts? When Paul says, your whole spirit, soul, and body, is he picking a side in this debate? Or, or to state the question a little bit differently, in terms of the, the theological debate, are the soul and the spirit, are they separate things, or are they two ways of saying the same thing? Now, I agree with many of the commentators that I read that it's actually unlikely that Paul is picking a side here and saying that a person is divided into three parts, that he's making a three-part case. He's simply using the phrase spirit, soul, and body to refer to the entirety of human personhood. And this is one of those times where you want to compare the Bible with the Bible. Because the principle that we use in interpreting Scripture is that Scripture interprets itself. And if you did that, you would see in 1 Corinthians 7.34, for example, Paul is talking about how the whole person should be devoted to the Lord. But there, he just says body and spirit. He's talking about the whole person, but he says, be devoted to the Lord in both body and spirit. Now, in the same way, in Matthew 10, verse 28, Jesus tells us that we should fear God because he has the power to save and to punish our whole person. He says, both body and soul. The whole person, both body and soul. And so what Paul is doing here in 1 Thessalonians 5 is he's simply emphasizing what he meant when he said that he wanted the Thessalonians to be sanctified completely through and through. He's praying that God would keep the entirety of their lives, without exception, whole spirit, whole soul, whole body, keep them all completely through and through blameless. In other words, keep them sanctified. So don't let the theological debate to, to deter you from the very important claim that Paul is making here, namely that God cares about all of you, not just your outside, but your inside, not just your actions, but your thoughts and your attitudes as well. And that's really good news because God cares. This means about all of us. It means he loves all of us. It means his sacrifice and his redemption is for all of us, body, soul, and spirit. And that's what was left on the desk.